who agrees in 4-5 Darcy should become Lady 4? I mean, how uh, fucking epic would that be? For Love and Thunder, directed once again by Taika Waititi, who uh, previously directed uh, For Ragnarok, and is the fourth Four movie, uh, as well as the 29th installment in the MCU overall. So, uh, uh, Love and Thunder tells the story taking place after the events of Endgame. Endgame was the previous MCU movie we saw Four in, where Four is... Uh, uh, just hanging out uh, with the Guardians until uh, he uh, uh, finally uh, uh, f uh, goes uh, off to find a purpose again and returns to New Asgard to recruit not only Valkyrie but uh, former girlfriend Jane Foster, played once again by Natalie Portman, uh, who uh, uh, has uh, been diagnosed with terminal cancer and becomes a Lady Four or two to be with Thor again and to bring some joy back uh, to her life uh, and uh, uh, and they uh, all uh, assemble uh, to uh, defeat uh, Gore, the God Butcher, who avows uh, the extinction of all gods. Uh, now Thor is the only one of the original Avengers uh, to uh, uh, go beyond three movies. I mean, the Iron Man stopped at three, Captain America stopped at three, and, and Thor is the only one of the original three Avengers leaders, uh, that's, uh, it, 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 that still lives. Oh, and of them, he has certainly had the longest and most, uh, extraordinary journey. I mean, uh, the first four still being my personal favourite. Uh, not that that movie's a classic, uh, but, but as a four movie, it's more than satisfactory. I mean, I wish the same could be said for uh, the second and third, for the Dark World, or for the Dull World, and for Ragnarok. <laughs> Both of them being lesser uh, MCU entries, uh, it, and especially the overrated Ragnarok. Oh, I mean, me and my good friend Mr. Tardis Levin are the only ones that give that movie a mediocre rating. Uh, though For Love and Thunder was on my uh, uh, top five most anticipated movies of 2022 list, as I, after I, after hearing. Uh, uh, that Jane would return in it all the way back in 2019. That immediately uh, got, got me uh, sold on the idea, and I was like, okay, automatic improvement over Ragnarok is if Jane's coming back, and she's gonna be a badass uh, uh, lady, a god of thunder. Okay, just uh, Marvel, you've outdone yourselves. Here's my money. J j just take it all. And Love and Thunder, despite being directed by the same director of the most beloved four movie Ragnarok, Taika Waititi, uh, it's, it, this seems to be the most divisive four movie among fans, and it's uh, it sucks that this movie is tanking at the UK box office. I mean, in my screening, there was barely uh, anybody there. Uh, and what camp am I in in the... Uh, debates that is for love and thunder a a uh, good movie uh, this uh, is a uh, 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 not quite the uh, flawless foursome movie i was hoping for uh, but so uh, there is still plenty to love in love and thunder um uh, this this is my favorite of the four sequels and a definite improvement over Ragnarok, uh, there I says it, even if the first four still takes my fancy just uh, slightly more, uh, but uh, L Love and Thunder uh, does what uh, Ragnarok should have done, it uh, balances the hearts and the uh, comedy uh, far better, Taika Waititi's direction this time has been up I gotta hand it to the guy, he could have easily have just taken the piss with the comedy, but so he knows uh, when to hold back the comedy when a serious uh, uh, and emotional tender moment is required. Uh, and Jane's uh, return uh, in itself is a pure blessing for me, and, uh, and truly elevates at this movie having her back. And not only that, but she is the best and most badass she has and most compelling she has ever been in the four franchise. I consistently uh, defended her in the first two movies, and I'm glad that she is, has gotten 
a way better reception in this one and fans are finally won over by her character when she becomes Lady Four. Her love story with Four is one of the many emotional strengths of this movie and is stronger than ever here and, and turns out Four and Jane broke up after the Dark World as uh, Four was so terrified of losing her that so he put up a barrier between their relationship so much to the point where they just uh, that their relationship was no longer compatible and uh, and uh, uh, and for uh, in this movie uh, is told by Star Lord that it's better to feel shitty than to feel uh, empty and nothing. <laughs> Thank uh, the Lord that the Guardians were only in like uh, uh, one or two scenes and then were out of the movie because I was so worried this was going to feel more like a Guardians movie than a 4 movie but no, it keeps the focus on what it should uh, for. As well as Jane, the other standouts are Valkyrie, uh, Korg, uh, the Screaming Goats and uh, Gore. Y yeah, uh, uh, always uh, uh, terrific to have a Valkyrie back and uh, I preferred her in Love and Thunder to Ragnarok and uh, uh, and I, I I love that she befriended Jane as a uh, you know as she 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 just is so eager to fight with with a sister again. Oh, and they didn't just forget about Darcy. Thankfully, she uh, appears in even if it's just one scene, she does appear. Uh, and say what you want about Darcy, but she's Jane's best friend. You've got to have her uh, in it in some form. And uh, uh, and Korga was. Uh, uh, ten times more hilarious uh, uh, than he was in uh, Ragnarok and, and he kind of narrates uh, uh, Thor and Jane's uh, love story. He is still like the comedic uh, grandson of the rock biter from the never ending story. <laughs> uh, screaming goats that would go ah, they that literally reacted to freaking everything. They, they got some, uh, a chuckle out of me or two. And there are scenes in this movie that will uh, uh, make you uh, scream uh, uh, as loud as those goats uh, because it is just that insane and uh, though uh, Zeus is the uh, uh, dad of the uh, supporting characters, I mean I have no issue with Russell Crowe playing Zeus, the god of uh, of a I have no issue with Russell Crowe play, playing Zeus, you know, uh, for a uh, certainly idolised him, uh, but uh, but the scene uh, felt unnecessary and added, uh, add, it literally led to nothing, even Valkyrie pointed that out. <laughs> it was just literally a setup for the post credit scene uh, that uh, where we see Zeus survive the lightning bolt to the chest. How on earth did he survive that? Well, I guess gods are immortal, <laughs> but... Uh, uh, the po it was just a setup for the post credit scene where we see Hercules, which is going to be four, five, or four, and Hercules. Uh, I can tell. Uh, but uh, Gorb uh, was the most surprising character in this movie, and the most surprising MCU villain in general. Four is no contest the greatest four villain. Uh, sorry, Hella, but uh, uh, and Christian Bale uh, absolutely uh, crushes this. I mean. And his kids begged him to do the role, and, and he even shaved off all his hair to uh, get into character. Now, uh, uh, that is a huge commitment, and, uh, and Gorb, not only, not only does he look unsettling uh, in, in his design, and his scenes are the closest four will ever get to a horror movie, but uh, uh, you, uh, you can't blame him for why he despises the gods so much after they... Uh, uh, after hit the god he prayed to, didn't give a shit about his dying world or his people, and just let him and his daughter down. And when, and when he grabs the necroblader, he uh, just he he just thought he was getting justice for his people, and that shaped him into thinking all gods were bad, because and the universe would be better off without them. But uh, that's where four comes into. Uh, help uh, Gorb uh, wake up and realise that uh, not all gods are bad and uh, so yeah Christian Bale is truly one of the most incredible actors uh, working today and he is one of the best Batmans and uh, and he's one of uh, the best MCU villains now and, and uh, I, I, it's great to see him in a comic book movie 10 years after uh, his previous one and Gore's 
daughter love. I mean, uh, in her brief appearance, uh, she is pure uh, sweetness, and uh, it's so sweet how Thor becomes her adopted father at the end. And and fun fact, that's actually Chris Hemsworth's uh, real daughter. Uh, she may be the cutest MCU child character uh, since uh, Morgan Tony's daughter, and uh, uh, it, it's re it's fresh that so uh, this is the only Thor movie with no Loki. Uh, thank God, because Loki's had his time, and. Uh, and there's also one shot so where uh, you see a, a frozen deceased uh, wrapped with spikes and it looks similar to a bewildered beast from How to Train Your Dragon 2. Am I the only one that fought that? <laughs> and uh, it uh, was uh, beyond a uh, call to go back to New Asgard and it's become like a, a fourth theme park in a way and, and uh, it's great that Thor empowered the kids at the end to uh, become mini Thors themselves. And though, like, 90% uh, of this movie I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed Love and Thunder up to a point, uh, but then the freaking ending happened. And I'm not going to go on an, an immature rant, I'm just going to go into detail why. In the calmest way possible, I have not read Jane's storyline in the comics, so... I guess she had cancer in the comics, so they were only being faithful to the comics in that sense. But seeing Jen go through cancer and chemo, it was upsetting for me. As as I, as you all know, I had a family member who who battled cancer and went through through uh, chemo and and uh, and uh, the hardships of cancer. And and I, I mean because I love the character of Jane so much, I just hated seeing Jane go through that. She didn't deserve it. And and uh, and when Jane loses her battle with cancer and passes away at the end, I mean, uh, I I know I could see what it was trying to do. You know, it was it was saying, oh, it's better for feel shitty than empty, but I'm sorry, killing off Jane just did not sit well with me. Sure, I'm uh, delighted they brought her back, but but I was just unsatisfied and disagreed with the ending they gave her. Like, I was rooting for her and Thor to finally be together, and Thor has lost literally everybody. Does he need to lose someone again? It's becoming a repetitive cliche in a Thor movie that he has to lose a loved one in every uh, film. I mean, can't he just at least have Jane and happily marry Jane at the end? That would have been the ending I would have gone for personally. That said, uh, that's a uh, uh, scene after the credits where Jane goes to Valhalla and meets a uh, hell deer. That does give me hope that uh, Jane will return in some form in 4-5, and if 4 uh, goes to Valhalla, he'll be with her again. So overall, regardless of my thoughts on uh, the ending, I still think there is more to love in 4 Love and Thunder than there's not, and I would still encourage more people to uh, give their support to this movie. I give Four Love and Thunder three stars out of five. Good movie. And yeah, I I uh, still can't get that da -da 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 song out of my head. I mean, uh, way better uh, a song from the full soundtrack than the ah from Ragnarok. Am I right? Uh, well. I love you guys, thank you for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and what are your thoughts on Love and Thunder? Are you with me in that it's the uh, most satisfying of the four sequels, or is it uh, your least favourite four movie and you kind of preferred Ragnarok of the Taika Waititi four movies? Please comment and let me know, please like this video and subscribe, please follow me on Twitter and on Instagram, and I'll see you all next time when I review Miss Marvel, and remember, movies are us. Bye guys.